Nobody ever wins a war, my kids used to say. Which is true, nobody ever wins. Now, I was born in Ascot Vale, very close to the Royal Melbourne Showgrounds, in 1924. So that's where I grew up and lived until I was married in 1948. Well, it was very hard in those days because, as, as you know by the date now, it was a depression and there wasn't much money around. There was a terrible, terrible lot of empty houses in Ascot Vale. I was lucky. My uh, father never lost his job, so we were a little bit lucky that way. But uh, it was very, it was a poor, well, it was a poor area, area everywhere in those days. And now the houses are over a million dollars, you know. So. Nineteen thirty-nine. Remember, Menzies getting on the, the radio and saying war's been declared and we're in it. I was in playing euchre with my parents because one of the, the euchre partners didn't turn up, and I was uh, what was I then? Thirty-nine, fifteen. And uh, my brother-in-law was in there at the time, and he joined the army. And of course, I, did, I had to wait. I joined the army in nineteen forty-two when I was eighteen. My mother got a letter from the uh, the council, uh, Essendon Council, that uh, congratulated that me being part of the, the war effort. And then uh, after a couple of days, going through x-rays and everything like that, physical tests, went out to Watsonia at the Army Barracks, which is still there. And uh, we did six weeks training because none of us had ever seen a... We're all, we're all strangers, nobody knew one another. And, uh, uh, never even seen a, a, a rifle or a hand grenade or anything like that, so we went through that quick course of six weeks. And we did a six weeks jungle training course at Canundra. It's about 15 k's out of the Gold Coast, where it is now. There was no Gold Coast in those days. And then after the six weeks training, unfortunately, we, there wasn't a ship ready, so we had to do another four weeks, and it was a hell of a task for people that never you know, in the assault course they call it, crawling under barbed wire with live bullets going over the top, over the ropes and over the barriers and everything like that. So, and then after the six weeks, we got on the steam train in those days and went to Townsville. When I, when we became 19, we all got shipped over on the ship. We didn't know where we were going, and a couple of k's out of, or miles in those days, out of New Guinea. We, that's where we were heading for. It was funny, nobody was scared. I think the first realisation was that when we climbed over the boat into the barges, because we knew we had to go into the shore and we knew the Japanese were there, so we didn't know what to expect naturally. Of course, the hardest part was when the, the mortar bombs, bombs come over and the blokes were dropping beside you, and that, that's, that's when you realise where you were. And what did I do to get into this sort of business, you know? You were there and that was it. I had to lead a patrol one day and there was only three of us. And one day there we, we went and we come on a, on a great big uh, couple of companies of Japanese and we, we saw the, the uh, wire, the uh, radio wires uh, along the tracks and that and we kept off the tracks and then they opened up on us and then we ran, ran got out like hell because we were told not when it got down to three, we wasn't allowed to attack the enemy, unless it was a straggler or anything like that. And then we, uh, and then I had to report to the uh, the boss, the captain, and everybody like that. So they went out that afternoon, and we I told them where they were and everything like that. The whole platoon went out in the afternoon. We were on the left, one up the centre. And I said, don't send them up the centre as a track, because that's where they open up on that. He didn't take any notice, he was only a raw new lieutenant and he sent him up the track and we lost five, you know, straight away. I was in actually New Guinea for 10 months and we came home and we thought, oh great, we're coming home, you know, you're still alive yourself and that's good. So we went up to the Athens Tableland, we had a couple of weeks holiday and we went up there and we didn't know what we was going to do and then all of a sudden the message came out, we're going back to the islands. We didn't know again, we went to uh, Bougainville. Right, uh, there was one terrible incident, incident there that one of the chaps said that he'd never, get, never go back to the islands again. Anyway, 
and everybody was picking at him. Of course, of course, you well, you wouldn't go AWL anyway. We're going back, and we all get on the boat to go back, as I told you. And uh, he put the rifle underneath his chin and, and killed himself. And we're on Bougainville for uh, 12 months. But only nine, we got there in the December and the war finished on the 15th of August. And then we had to wait for a ship, take it in turns to get home with it because there's not many ships around, a lot were sunk naturally. And so they built a football ground and we played football and they played rugby and they had athletic, because they had to keep us occupied, there's nothing to do. A lot of the blokes, it's a sad thing to say, were tropo and that they wanted to get home and they sit on the edge of the at the beach, just looking out to sea for a ship, and they'd see him go past. But you know, it, it was uh, just on four months until we got home. It, war finished on the 15th. I think I got home on the 12th of December. To be honest, it, it's a hard thing to say, but it was just like a job. You know, like they'd be carrying the stretches past us as we were going forward, that were in other sections that were getting wounded and killed, and that. And, uh, you know, it, it, I don't know, it didn't phase you, unfortunately. It, it, it's funny to describe, really, because you just have to keep going, I suppose. Get it out of your mind. You know, one chap there, I remember Jack Boswell, it was his name, and he was on the stretcher and they stopped for rest because they was carrying him through the jungle up the hills and that, you know, mountains, I should say. And they were talking to him there and that, and then about 12 hours later we got the word that he died. And, just, we just couldn't believe it, you know. You know, things like that that Joe Munkars, some of the blokes I'd never remember, you know, but Boswell and Munkars and Schooler, they're the ones you can remember because you were there when it when it happened, you know. And you feel guilty at times, you know. Why am I here and there? They're gone sort of business. So, you know, that, that's how, how it went. You, as, my, as I said, my granddaughter said, if, if you want to come back, I wouldn't be here, Pop. So. And that, that's what it was, your, your name wasn't on the bullet or the bit of shrapnel that, that killed our other bloke.